Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and this is the Not So Serious Keto video podcast. From time to time, I will talk about my recording schedule during the podcast, and the podcast itself is typically recorded on Saturday or Sunday. It's Sunday today when I'm recording it, and Sunday is also one of my run days. So I get up every morning fairly early and either go for a walk or a run or a combination of the two, and Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays are run days. But Sundays are my favorite because when you're out at 6 in the morning on a Sunday, there's nothing else going on. It is so peaceful. It is so quiet. I live about a mile off of the interstate, and as a result, there's just this constant drone of traffic noise. But not on a Sunday at 6 in the morning. In fact, I did not see a single car while I was out this morning. Well, I mean, I saw cars that were parked. I didn't see any cars that were driving until right near the, the very end, so right about 8 a.m., I saw a car driving by, but I actually saw twice as many deer as I did cars. So this was kind of a surprise right at the end of my, my walk. Well, I ran and then walked, but I saw two deer. Kind of wild, you know, just right in the middle of a neighborhood. Anyhow, not keto, but I just wanted to throw that out there because I was kind of excited, you know, seeing these deer this morning. I think most of this uh, podcast is going to be fairly short topics. So as we move through, one I wrote down, butt padding. So I talk an awful lot about positive and unexpected side effects of keto. Well, this one, not so much so. I've noticed recently as I sit down, I'm surprised it took me five years to notice this. Maybe it's a combination of both the, the weight loss from keto and then maybe some more muscle from, from running. But Sitting down on unpadded chairs, like this wooden one, the stool I'm on right now, or at a restaurant or something like that, it used to be I could just plop right down and I had a fair amount of cushion on my backside, which made for a nice little bit of padding. Can't do that anymore. Now if I plop down on something wood, it's kind of uncomfortable. Short topic. Moving on. So the other day, I got out onto SeriousKeto.com because I wanted to make sure that I got a recipe right. And it had been a while since I made it. I don't remember what it was at the moment, but I do remember I got out on the site and I got multiple pop-up ads. And this was frustrating to me because I've always prided myself on having SeriousKeto.com be a nice, clean, easy to use website. And at least, you know, in terms of recipes, I don't go and I, I don't pad it with a bunch of extra stuff. Like this was the first time I ever made a chaffle. And I remember on that day, you know what I'm talking about. So many of these recipe sites, they just drag it on and on and on so they can fit in all these ads before they get to the actual recipe. And then, you know, you try and print out the recipe and there's ads in the recipe. So no, I try and make it nice and clean, limit the, the recipe to the recipe, and it should be a nice clean printout as well. But seeing all these pop-ups, I'm like, what's going on here? And apparently Google AdSense decided to get a little bit more aggressive in optimizing my website. So hopefully I've cleared that up. I at least got rid of, I think, the pop-up ads. So if you've been out on SeriousKeto.com recently and seen those pop-ups, hopefully you won't be seeing them anymore. On the subject of things that are mildly disturbing, I'm continuing to see comments disappear on YouTube, on my channel. For instance, there was one today, a woman was talking about the Unbelievable Buns and how she had ordered four packages of them because she loves the channel, loves my reviews, and she got them and wasn't thrilled with them. Found them too chewy. I talk about in the review that they are kind of chewy, a little bit spongy, and that's why I prefer to toast them or butter and griddle them. But her point was, before you get all gung-ho about any product, you should just maybe order one, you know, whether it's the Unbelievable Bun or, or anything, honestly, that I review. Order one, see if you like it before going nuts and ordering a bunch. And I replied to her, agreeing with most of what she said. I do like the Unbelievable Buns. I, you know, I like them toasted. But I agreed they, they are kind of chewy. And I also agreed that, yeah, you should probably try a product first, do a small order and then decide if you want to do a bigger order. And I hit send and my comment disappeared. And then I hit refresh on the comment screen and her comment disappeared. Now, I don't know if she just decided to delete her own comment. I didn't delete it. It just, it concerns me when, when I see things like that. And maybe I shouldn't be concerned. Maybe, maybe, maybe it was just her that deleted it. But if 
if you are that woman and are watching this right now and you didn't delete your comment, I want you to know I didn't delete it either. And while we're on the topic of things that have me feeling a little bit nervous or disturbed or uncomfortable, a video showed up in my YouTube feed recently by Country Living Experience is the name of the channel. It's a homesteading channel. And the, the gentleman that was doing the video talked about how he got a content strike from YouTube. So a content strike is when you as a content creator put something out onto YouTube that runs afoul of YouTube's terms and conditions. I believe you are allowed two strikes. And after that second strike, your channel is demonetized. I don't know if they will delete your channel or just delete the offending videos, but I'm pretty sure you do get demonetized, which if you're doing this as your full-time gig, like I am, that's a scary, scary proposition. And basically what this, what this guy got demonetized, or not demonetized for, got his content strike for, he was talking about some plant or herb that has some medicinal benefits. That was it. And that was enough to get a content strike. The reason that YouTube gave him for the content strike was that he was posting medical misinformation. And I feel like that is a, is a reason for a content strike. That's, that's, mm, it, it's open to interpretation, I think. I think you could quantify a lot of potential things as medical misinformation, including a lot of the discussions around keto. And that, that does make me nervous. And I know that there have been other content creators, other keto content creators that have talked about this, that they've talked about being sort of, I'm not going to say shadow banned, but that, that their channel, they have seen that their channel is not being promoted by YouTube as much. I've experienced that as well, but it's hard. It's hard not to be a little bit concerned because I think it would be fairly easy to say that talking about keto, talking about the benefits of a ketogenic lifestyle could be called medical misinformation. So as a keto content creator, I guess I'm gonna have to be just especially mindful of some of the things that I say because I want this channel to stick around. I've had a couple of keen-eyed viewers who have noticed that I've moved, well, I didn't move my ring. I got a different ring, a different Ultra Human Air ring. I went from the Aster Black to the Titanium, but more importantly, I went up a couple of sizes so that I could put this on my middle finger instead of my ring finger. The problem being, on my ring finger, it was rubbing against the pinky knuckle right here. Far more comfortable on my middle finger. So what, you may be asking, am I gonna do with the Aster Black size eight ring that was on my ring finger? Well, I'm actually going to do a giveaway on that, and I'm doing this as a giveaway specifically for my channel members. So these are the people that contribute to the channel, contrib contribute to its financial well-being, and in return, they get certain perks, like advanced views on videos, that's one of the big ones, periodic um, live streams and live chats. Sometimes I'll do them from the kitchen. I'll show an experiment I'm working on. Other times it's just from my office. Now the weird thing, and I talked to a YouTube representative about this, you cannot, as a content creator with channel membership, list giveaways as one of the perks. Because I guess that's um, kind of like gambling then. You're, you're, you're paying for an opportunity to win. You can, however, talk about it in videos. So that's what's gonna happen to the ring. I am going to give it away to one of my channel members just because, I mean, they're the ones that really truly help keep this channel going. If it weren't for them, uh, this would not be financially viable for me anymore. I will still continue to do giveaways for all of the rest of you as well, including um, probably in another week or so, the next Keto Chow giveaway, the monthly box. And I've, I was kind of going through my keto pantry, looking at some things where I might be able to do some sort of a um, combination, multi-product, multi-vendor giveaway. Maybe I'll do that when I hit 320,000 subscribers. So stay tuned for that. A question that I will often get from my viewers is, are you ever going to do a cookbook? And I've really kind of waffled on this. Uh, the big problem is, the time aspect of, of, of putting together a cookbook. And I'm just, I'm not real big on administrative tasks. I've talked about that before. 
However, I really, I really feel like I need to put together a cookbook. So I am going to start learning the, some of the Adobe Creative Cloud apps, in particular InDesign, which is the one that I've, I've got some access to some templates, some cookbook templates. So I'm going to start taking an online course on that in September with the hopes of at some point in 2025 releasing the first, perhaps only, Serious Keto cookbook. So stay tuned for that. As a final topic, I want to talk about being afraid of stuff, or maybe afraid is too strong of a word, but being concerned about various ingredients, cooking methods, etc. Now, I know that everybody, myself included, has some food or ingredient or something that we're opposed to. For me, my ones are soybean oil and canola oil. And you know, all of really all of the seed oils, but those are the two biggies that I see most often in food. And I find that they cause me inflammation, which is why I choose not to eat them. I, my knuckles start to puff up, my knees hurt, my lower back hurts. I've talked about this a number of different times. That is why I choose to avoid them. And in all honesty, I think probably most people, if not all people, should avoid them. But I don't get preachy about it. I don't tell you, don't eat it. If you want to eat it, go ahead and eat it. I make sure that I call it out on ingredients so that you're aware of it. But ultimately, it's your decision. Now, here's the thing. Everybody has something that they're concerned about as a food ingredient or cooking method or whatever. And the thing is, it seems like pretty much everybody wants to let me know about them. And I started thinking, if I actually avoided everything that everybody told me is bad or that I should avoid, I wouldn't have anything in, in terms of a cooking channel. There would be nothing that I could make because everybody's got something that they're opposed to. And a couple of weeks ago, I had done a little bit of a topic on Teflon and the, uh, what is it, Teflon flu is what it's called, which is a result of overheating Teflon, so getting up over 500 degrees, which I never do. Anyhow, that topic was purely on the Teflon flu. It wasn't about Teflon in general. It wasn't about forever chemicals. And one of my viewers mentioned forever chemicals and how you know they can get into the environment, sometimes as part of the manufacturing process, sometimes as part of the, the disposal of things that are made with forever chemicals. Um, I don't know how much in terms of forever chemicals you can get into your body from eating something off of Teflon or using any of the products that have forever chemicals in it. But as I started looking at the list of things that contain forever chemicals, I just thought, how? How do you avoid all of this stuff? So hang on, I'm going to read to you the list of things that contain forever chemicals. Smartphones, circuit boards, semiconductors, insulated wiring, screen protectors, solar panels, lithium, lithium ion batteries, flame retardants, including those found in almost all televisions, food packaging, such as pizza boxes, food wrappers, takeout containers, microwave popcorn bags, disposable trays, and bakery bags, firefighting foam, carpets, rugs, furniture textiles, window treatments, car seats, stain-proof and waterproof clothing, outdoor gear, umbrellas, personal care products like dental floss, mascara, foundation, sunscreen, and menstrual underwear, artificial turf, medical equipment and masks, building products, firefighters, personal protective equipment. Quite the list there. So take that and avoid all those things. And then plastic and microplastic and nanoplastic, which is kind of everywhere also. I mean, the fact now that you can find microplastics and nanoplastics at the bottom of the Mariana Trench, you can find it on the Galapagos Islands. These are a couple of the most remote places on Earth, and yet there's still microplastic and nanoplastic there. You can find it in the placentas of newborns. So you, you start taking all of this in and you just wonder, what do I do? Do I be afraid of everything? That's, I suppose, one option. I suppose another option is I could be completely cavalier about it all. You know, you got to die of something. I think I'm probably somewhere in between, which is, and, and I hope that most of you are as well, which is we do the best we can. 
we, we realize, I think in the case of forever chemicals and plastics, the genie's kind of out of the bottle. And there's, there's a limit to how much we can avoid. It's something I wrestle with because just every single day you get out onto any sort of a news feed and there's some bad news about some disease or something being bad for you or some news about plastic or forever chemicals or, or whatever. And it's just, it's, it's overwhelming. So what I tend to do is I tend to prioritize those things that I feel either present a, an obvious, clear, and present danger to me or something that I feel specifically affects my body. And, and maybe that's short-sighted. It's entirely possible that that is short-sighted. But I think I would just be living in a constant state of anxiety if, if I really truly worried about every ingredient that people post on my comments saying, oh, that ingredient is horrible, or microwaves are horrible, or aluminum is horrible, or, or whatever. So I do the best I can, and I continue to collect information, and I'm aware that what is my position today may not be my position tomorrow. There may be a, 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 an ingredient that suddenly does start affecting me, that suddenly causes me issues, and then that will also be on my list of things to avoid. And I also think that when everything is dangerous, then suddenly you, you start to become numb to it. So I'll continue to prioritize the way that I prioritize. I encourage all of you to do the same. We all make our own decisions using the best information we have at the time. So that's gonna be it. I, I don't know if you could tell that I was really kind of struggling to be articulate on that topic. I'm still trying to develop my own thoughts, but anyhow, uh, I'm all out of thoughts for this podcast. So that's gonna be the end. As always, I thank you for spending a little bit of time with me. I thank you for your interaction on the channel, being part of the Serious Keto community. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching.